Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is August 5th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Barack Obama says election fraud is a conspiracy theory. And uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory, of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? Meanwhile, Harry Reid says he wants the CIA to give fake intelligence briefings to Donald Trump. If now, because he's the nominee for the party, uh, and he gets, he's entitled to briefings from the CIA, for example, I told, I said publicly, give him fake briefings. Pretend you're briefing him. Don't tell him anything that you don't want to get out. Then, pro-Hillary Mayor Silverthorne of Fairfax, New Jersey, just got busted in a meth for sex exchange. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. It's a very serious time for politics here in the United States of America. And to a point, you do like a bit of comic relief. You watch the late night shows, you watch these uh, stand-up comedians, they make light of the times. And to an extent, that's good. But what if somebody from the State Department just comes out and blatantly laughs at the thought of transparency and democracy? Well, that's exactly what's happening at the State Department, as well as other things, White House press briefings, where they come in, they bring everybody in, they say, regurgitate these talking points. And then when they ask them the hard questions, they either completely botch the answer, if they answer them at all. And now we see this, a State Department spokesman laughs at the mention of democracy and transparency. Welcome to the State Department. I think we have some interns in the back. Welcome. Uh, good to see you in this uh, exercise in transparency and democracy. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Sorry, I thought it was, I didn't mean to break I thought it was an exercise, of, an exercise <laughs> in spin and obfuscation. <laughs> All right. Can you tell this is my last briefing? And at least the guy was being honest. He knows it's just a big joke. He's there as a figurehead. He's a conduit for the anger or the resentment of the American people. He's there as a dodge or a, a scarecrow for the journalist because all he is is a lightning rod for all the controversy because they understand they can put these uh, press secretaries, the spokesmen like this guy out there in front. They take all the hard questions and then the guys in the back, they just sit around and laugh like, oh, look at John, we made him look like a moron. Same thing when you go to police press briefings. And as I always say uh, about the State Department or, you know, when you get the, the interview sheet or the uh, fact sheet from the public information officer, or as me and David Knight like to call them, the public disinformation officers, um, this is what they want you to regurgitate to your viewers. If you guys recall, it wasn't all that long ago that the State Department came out and said it was a, quote, mistake uh, that Syrian rebels, Western funded, of course, sawed off a little boy's head with a knife. And with this type of mentality, it doesn't surprise me at all that the guy just can't hold it in anymore. He's like, yeah, this is a complete joke. I'm sure he didn't even like that report about the Syrian rebels. I'm sure this guy in his heart is a good guy. He wants to do right, but he has the people up at the top, you know, prodding him along. Hey, you know, Mike or whatever the guy's name is, you're going to read this press release. You're going to say it's a mistake. You're going to give everybody all the rosy answers that they want to hear. But in reality, we all know that we're going to do nothing. We're going to continue to fund these organizations because that's exactly what we do. So with that said, you know, when I run into these PIOs, the public information officers or guys like this, I'm not so much mad at them. They're just the conduit. You know, it, it, they're just the puppet. They're the figurehead. Like I said, they're the, the scarecrow, the straw man. That's all they do. They're just the conduit. But unfortunately, we do have people like this and then also the reporters who regurgitate the talking points without any thought to it. Now, that's some disinformation, but what if you just don't give people any type of information? And that's what Harry Reid is proposing for Donald Trump. He's saying he wants the CIA to give Trump fake intelligence briefings. In comments not widely reported last week, the Democratic Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid said he would rather see the CIA and other intelligence agencies give GOP nominee Donald Trump fake briefings, then make sure he's informed before potentially becoming president. And this is his quote. I would suggest to the intelligence agencies, if you're forced to brief this guy, don't tell him anything, just fake it because this man is dangerous. And that's what he told in an interview to the Huffington Post. And it's very interesting to me how much they dislike this guy to the point 
where they will just deny him real factual information. Because even if you give real factual information to somebody like Mrs. Clinton, she ignores it. Case in point, Benghazi. Um, Ambassador Stevens have been sending her office cables for quite some time, months leading up before his death. I know they want you to believe it's just that stupid innocence of Muslims uh, cartoon or, or live action cartoon. No, 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 it wasn't that. He was saying, hey, we're over here in Benghazi. It's getting hot. We need some more contractors out here. And they responded by taking his security away from him. And of course, we know the man died. And an interesting side note to that Benghazi story, I saw some article that since the election cycle has started, uh, 13 Hours of the Benghazi movie is doing exceptionally well on DVD or uh, a Redbox or a Netflix, whatever it's on. A lot of people going out and renting this because they want to find out, you know, what is all this Benghazi about? So, you know, good job to you guys who made the film. But back to the information at hand, we have so much disinformation, whether it's uh, people in the FBI trying to doctor the transcripts of the Orlando shooter, not redact, not, you know, take out the, the black Sharpie and mark it out. No, like completely changing the narrative as to what actually happened, literally changing history before our li eyes, or I guess lies would work for that as well. And they would have got away with it too if it wasn't for those meddling info warriors and the other people in the alternative media who say, no, you guys are trying to rewrite history. Or uh, the FBI coming out and completely downplaying the actions of Mrs. Clinton as it came to our emails. The FBI director himself said, yeah, we believe she uh, compromised national security when she did these things, but we're gonna give her a pass because she's Mrs. Clinton. And of course, uh, Mrs. Lynch meeting with old Billy Boy on the private jet. And it's like, oh, we talked about you know, golf and the NBA finals and how cute our grandkids are. We, you know, played Pokemon Go. We didn't talk about his wife being under investigation. <laughs> That's completely ridiculous. That's conspiracy theory, just like Obama's coming out. Um, election fraud is a conspiracy theory. And now, this isn't anything particular to the uh, Trump, Hillary, I guess, Gary Johnson, Jill Stein current situation. But every year we see the reports about people who are dead voting in elections. And they do this by uh, stealing somebody's identity. Let's say like the old lady who lived next door to you for you know 20 years just uh, fell over and died. If you know her name and you live someplace where you don't need a ID to go vote, you can say, hey, you know, I'm Mrs. Uh, Jenkins from such and such. And they say, oh yeah, here you go, here's your form. You can be some big bearded guy with tattoos all over him, but uh, they don't check to make sure these things are accurate. So that's how you get voter fraud or one of the ways you can get voter fraud. So to say that it's a conspiracy theory that exists is completely ridiculous. But uh, that's enough on that for right now. Now let's talk about some, some fraud in another way. Let's say you're trying to defraud your nation by joining ISIS. And we've seen multiple reports of this, not just here in the States, but I believe there are some young ladies from Australia who went and joined ISIS. You get all these college kids and high school kids for spring break or whatever, they go out and hang out with the jihad. He's like, yeah, man, I'm going out here. I'm gonna take some selfies and play some hacky sack. Uh, and then they end up dead because they realize it's a lot harder to get out of those situations than it was to get in. They think they're gonna go in on some like real life Discovery Channel adventure, you know, with a crocodile hunter. Yes, we're here with the with the terror. And I'm like, no, bro, you're going out there with a bunch of psychopaths who are killing people. Uh, these get, guys are getting funding from the CIA, other organizations. Do you think they want witnesses to go back home and tell people what's actually going on? Negative. And now we see a North Carolina man charged with conspiring to provide material support to ISIL. And this is Eric Hendricks. He's age 35. He tried to recruit people to train together and conduct terrorist attacks in the United States on behalf of ISIL. According to a criminal complaint unsealed today in the U.S. District Court in the Northern District of Ohio. This was back in June 2015. An individual was arrested in Ohio after attempting to purchase an AK-47 assault rifle and ammunition from an undercover officer. And the person had previously pledged allegiance to ISIL and social media and made statements expressing interest in conducting attacks in the United States. Now, this is why you have an FBI. When FBI does things like this, they uh, crack down on guys like this, that's what they're there for. They're not there to, you know, uh, spy on the, the general person's phone calls. They're not there to, you know, track your porn search, search, searches and all this stuff. They're there to make sure that criminal activity does not grow to a bigger extent here in the United States of America. But when they're doing all this metadata, when they're, uh, you know, sucking up people's internet searches because they Google pressure cookers, that's not what they're there for. They're there for stuff like this to stop things from actually happening. So in cases like this, I will say that the people involved in law enforcement did a good job, but they should be doing more of this and less of tracking down mundane activities like the normal person does in their everyday lives. Now, somebody who's not too much in the mundane of the activity, but some of the more uh, uh, sensational activity, this is a Virginia mayor 
He was arrested for meth in a sex bust. And this is Richard Silverthorne. He is a mayor of Fairfax, Virginia, the wealthy Washington suburb of 22,000 people. And he was also a substitute teacher in the county public schools. I guess somewhat, to an extent, a real Walter White uh, selling the meth there on the side. And Silverthorne was arrested and charged with felony distribution of methamphetamine and a misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia. And they say the reason the cops cracked down on him is uh, investigators identified a person who was allegedly distributing methamphetamine via a website used to arrange casual sexual encounters between men. Police said in a statement, and the guy has been released on his own recognizance. Now, I used to work at a jail, and when people came in for selling meth, not just meth possession, but uh, selling meth, they usually didn't just let them out with a, a slap on the wrist, or I guess selling any type of uh, drug, illegal drug here in the States. And it was like, no, you're a drug dealer, you're going to go to court, you're going to face the judge, you're going to do all the arraignment, the whole nine yards. They may get to plead out, but they're going to go through the process anyway. So it just seems to me like this guy may be getting a slap on the wrist. And other articles out there uh, from alternative news sites that say the guy was also a Hillary supporter. I don't know too much about him on that regard, but it definitely is interesting to see the double standard of how they treat people. If the guy was some Trump supporter, I probably would have put him on the cover of a magazine with his wife butt naked. And, uh, and to talk about the political correctness of this in one second, let's not show these images because I don't like either one of these images. But when you think about the discrepancy to where they will show Trump's wife butt naked on a magazine cover, and I don't even like the guy, but damn, you put his wife on there butt naked, and then you got pictures of Obama's daughter, you know, twerking at spring break, and one's completely acceptable, and one is you're just a uh, chauvinistic, uh, bigoted pig or whatever else. I'm like, well, she is 18 years old. Of course, I do not justify people, you know, uh, shaming the girl for it. She was in a public place, and she got her picture taken in a public way, so I understand that, but the reaction to it, to where they would put it online, like, look at Obama's daughter, she's such a this and she's such a that. Meanwhile, they'll look at Trump, like, look, at she's a nasty this and that. I'm like, well, you understand there's a complete discrepancy. In both cases, I think it's a kind of a disgusting way to exploit somebody because of their affiliation to a politician, or in the case of Trump, a potential politician, but uh, one's viewed as acceptable and the other one is viewed as not. And that's just a thought I had on that. Now let's talk about things going on uh, here in the United States, particularly in Florida, where they have the Zika virus. Now, to preface this story, I'm reminded of a TED talk that Bill Gates did many years ago, where he was talking about genetically modifying mosquitoes to go out there and cure diseases or to vaccinate people, I guess, more accurately. He said, we would load up all these uh, mosquitoes with whatever we thought was prevalent at the time, then we'd go around and have them bite people without their consent, pretty much forcing vaccinations on you. Now the FDA is looking at this in a little different way. They're not so much going after individuals, at least that's not what they're saying. They're saying that they're going to green light releasing mutant Zika killing mosquitoes in Florida. And the FDA released a final environmental assessment of the trial, finding that it will not have significant impacts on the environment. The project led by a biotech company that focuses on in insect control calls for the release of thousands of genetically engineered male mosquitoes. The lab insects are bred so that over time, they could kill off much of the local mosquito population, passing on a gene fatal to any offspring they have with wild females. Now, what could possibly be wrong with genetically modifying an organism than sending it out there to mate? I mean, it's not like movies have ever been made about it. And of course, I understand that's the difference between science fiction and reality, but you do have reality that turns into science fiction when you do weird stuff like this. Uh, it's uh, uh, unknown, unknown. I, I don't see why they would green light a project by the FDA. If some like some college kid said, hey, let's do this for fun, I could maybe understand that. But for the FDA to green light that, I just don't really understand that, especially when you have the CDC director. And of course, I don't agree with everything the CDC says, but they say they're out there spraying the mosquitoes with aerosols and it's doing a pretty effective job of killing off the mosquitoes in the neighborhoods where uh, the Zika virus has killed 15 people. So uh, the aerosol sprays are working just fine, but I guess because they have the budget, the FDA wants to do this, I don't know. Now, while people here in the States are busy complaining about Margot Robbie wearing booty shorts in the new Suicide Squad movie, there's an actual war on women taking place overseas. And by the way, all those uh, social justice warriors who complained about her uh, dress in that film, they had no issue with Will being shirtless and sweaty in the first scene of the entire movie. Just saying. But back to real news. Girls rescued from Varanasi brothels tell their horrifying stories of a place worse than hell in a new documentary. Varanasi is in India. 
They were holding me so tight that it was difficult for me to even breathe. I kept screaming, but no one came to rescue me. They raped me for two days. I was brutally kicked and slapped and sent to Mumbai. And Mumbai is where they have Kamathipur. It's one of the largest red light districts in the world. Uh, horrible things going on over there, but you would never know that because you look at the TV and you see what they're complaining about. Now, something its not the hardest hitting news of the day, but I thought was very interesting how China is addressing its transportation problem. And now they have these elevated buses. And some interesting videos out there. Uh, the bus is 16 feet off the ground, which means that many commercial cars will be able to drive under it. Uh, I do have the concern of what's going to happen when somebody rams into this thing. You know, somebody just goes off the rails and knocks into it. Does it affect it how much? And also, it's a, kind of a mock project. You know, there's something they'd maybe like to see done, but the country as it is right now isn't ready to integrate it on a large scale. But something that's interesting, and we'll see how it develops. Now, finally, tonight we'll talk about celebrities. And we see all the time celebrities coming out. Sometimes they say very good things. I supported of a not Bill Clinton, but Clint Eastwood's comments talking about the generation that's going on currently, how they're a bunch of trigley puffs. Also, Kurt Russell talking about the Second Amendment. But in contrast, you have guys like Matt Damon who say that he's not for the Second Amendment in our sense. He wants an Australian type of control. And he's welcome to his opinion, but I like this opinion from Tyson Beckford. So we'll go out to break with this, and we'll come back right after this with more special reports. There was a stink about him holding a gun on the Jason Bourne uh, advertisement. Yeah, because he claims he's not like, you know, he ain't, he's not 2 way friendly. So, I mean, you can't sit there and denounce the gun when the gun is making you money. So it's kind of hard to be, you know, I find, me personally, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't play that, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm 2 way all day, you know, but I, I guess, you know, it's Hollywood. You, you can lie and pay and make money. Ladies and gentlemen, President Barack Obama has recently touted Donald Trump's claims that the elections are going to be rigged as a conspiracy theory. He has also gone as far as to say he doesn't even know what that means, rigged elections. What does that even mean? Um, it, it is... Uh, I don't even really know where to start on answering this question. Uh, of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? Now, two things that I took away from President Obama's response. First, he says, the election process is run on the state and local level, not by the federal government. I'm sorry, did anybody ask you about the federal government? Did anybody say the federal government was rigging it? Obama basically just indicted the federal government as an untrustworthy government enterprise. Right there. Unbelievable that he would say that when it wasn't even brought up. So he brings up the fact that the federal government doesn't run the elections as a case to say that the elections are gonna be run clean. So again, Obama indicting an untrustworthy federal government. He then said, if Mr. Trump is up 10 or 15 points on election day and ends up losing, then maybe he can raise some questions, but that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. Well, now hold on. It was just a couple weeks ago where Trump was dominating the polls and all of a sudden, 10 or 15 points behind. So Obama, a little double think, a little double speak there. And this goes without even mentioning the fact that Donald Trump has thousands and thousands of people attending his rallies, and Hillary Clinton is lucky if she can even fill a room. In fact, I would say Donald Trump has to turn more people down from getting into his rallies than Hillary Clinton even gets into her rallies. And if, if that doesn't illustrate how these polls are rigged, if that doesn't illustrate how the establishment wants to rig this election, I don't know what does. So there's a couple points on President Obama's doublespeak in that reaction. But let's get into some of the evidence that we have of rigged elections. And, it, and it's, it's so much that it's unbelievable that our own president would sit here and say he doesn't even know what that means. Are you kidding me, Obama? You don't know what that means? Well, let's tell you what it means. Let's start with a World Net Daily exclusive where they highlight that in some inner city precincts, Obama garnered between 98 and 100% of the vote 
As Rush Limbaugh said, third world dictators don't even get 99% of the vote. And of course, it was Lenin that said, the voters don't decide the elections, the people that count the votes decide the elections. But Obama said that's not the federal government, so I guess we can trust it, right? It's also worth mentioning that there were more than 100 Cleveland inner city precincts where Obama got 100% of the vote. So, if that isn't evidence of a rigged election, I don't know what is. But again, it's not the federal government tallying it, so I guess it's trustworthy. Absentee ballots are particularly vulnerable to voter fraud. In upstate Troy, New York, eight local Democrat politicians were indicted and four have pleaded guilty to falsifying absentee ballots. Eight local Democrat politicians have been indicted for falsifying absentee ballots. But Barack Obama doesn't know what a rigged election is. Bob Murch, the former Republican legislator who first discovered this fraud said, it's an insider game. It takes insiders to do it. And I think it takes insiders to catch those who try to steal the election. It's easy to do it. And yes, it's easy not to get caught. Frank LaPosta, a former Troy New York City Council president, said he got run out of the Democratic Party for speaking out against voter fraud. And we're going to have a lot more evidence that ties the Democratic Party to this voter fraud, the party of our own president, Barack Obama. 75 GOP vote inspectors were ordered to leave Philadelphia poll locations by Democratic poll judges. Again, the Democrats trying to rig elections. Maryland Representative Elijah Cummings issued a highly publicized threat against the True Vote and Election Integrity Maryland just for checking voter rolls. EIM found 11,000 questionable registrations, including over 1,500 dead voters. The Maryland Board of, El of Elections took no action. Of course, Elijah Cummings is a Democrat. And despite overwhelming nonpartisan support for voter ID laws, Attorney General Eric Holder's Justice Department and liberal jurists have delayed, emasculated, or defeated ID laws in Texas, Wisconsin, Carolina, Arizona, and Pennsylvania. Holder has vowed to fight voter ID laws as they restrict voters' rights. And we've got actually more on that where they claim that it's racist. Don't you love that talking point from the left? If they don't like where you're steering the conversation, they call you a racist. Now, there's, there's so much more to this, and one of the big issues comes from President Bill Clinton with the National Voter Registration Act, also known as the Motor Voter. Illinois' Governor Jim Edgar, a Republican who refused to enforce the new law because he feared it would open the door to widespread voter fraud. Obama working with the Clinton Justice Department while he was with ACORN, you'll hear a lot from them in this segment, Project Vote and the League of Women Voters sued Illinois. So again, we have Democrats connected to voter fraud, and we have Obama himself, who was tied into ACORN, who has been tied into more voter fraud, uh, perhaps than any other alphabet bureaucracy uh, that we have in America. But Obama says he doesn't know about rigged elections. Oh, I don't know about rigged elections. I just worked with ACORN. There's more from that World Net Daily exclusive. I encourage you to look into it. Even CNN, folks, even CNN reports more than 2,000 voter registration forms filed in northern Indiana's Lake County by a liberal activist group this week have been turned out to be bogus. Again, liberals, Democrats, voter fraud. And this is CNN reporting this. The group, the Association of Community Organizations for Reform, ACORN, already faces allegation of filing fraudulent voter registrations in Nevada and faces investigations in many other states. Obama doesn't know anything about this, though. Our own president. 
This is a report from Breitbart. Hundreds of dead voters found voting in California. An investigation by CBS News Los Angeles-based affiliate has determined that hundreds of dead people are still voting in California. CBS2 compared millions of voting records from the California Secretary with death records from Social Security Administration and found that there were dead people voting. Unbelievable. The Obama administration has consistently argued that new laws to improve ballot security and voter transparency, like voter ID, are racist efforts to exclude minorities and unnecessary because voter fraud rarely happens. Folks, I'm about to document, look at this. I have a book sitting in front of me of cases of voter fraud, okay? Barack Obama says, that he doesn't know about rigged elections. What's that? He works for ACORN. ACORN has been caught red-handed. He tells you he doesn't want voter ID laws because it's racist. Excuse me. This is a little insane. <sighs> this is from Washington Free Beacon. A Clinton campaign lawyer has been linked to dead people voting, folks. His name is Mark Elias and he has been investigated for voter fraud, and he has been fighting voter ID laws uh, for his whole career. Now, I've got a book of documented voter fraud in the United States. This is a three-part report put out by discoverthenetworks.org. Hundreds of cases of voter fraud documented in the U.S., linked to ACORN, linked to the Democrats, but Obama claims he has no idea. The Washington Post, winner of 47 Pulitzer Prizes. What else are you working on? Well, we're after a list of creep employees. Where is it? It's classified. Well, how are you going to get it? We haven't had any luck yet. Get some. I want to stress that in accepting these resignations, I mean to leave no implication, whatever, of personal wrongdoing on their part. The paper led by Woodward and Bernstein that broke the Watergate scandal wide open back in the 1970s is now a shell of its former self. Existing as a plastic brand name catering to the panicked elite criminal class it was once trusted to expose. The final nail in the waning integrity of the Washington Post coffin came in 2013 when Amazon billionaire Jeff Bezos bought the paper from longtime owners, the Graham family, for $250 million in cold hard cash. In 2014, Bezos appointed Politico founder Frederick J. Ryan as publisher and CEO of the Washington Post. That in itself says it all. Since these changes, the Post's lean towards the left has grown increasingly obvious transforming the Washington Post into a bullhorn of Hillary Clinton propaganda. And as I have reported before, with the death of the Smith-Munn Act in 2013, propaganda now has no limitations when it comes to feeding lies into the American media machine. Baseless spun headlines such as, Republicans nominate dangerously insane person to lead America, then panic when he proves he's dangerously insane. This headline borders on something from The Onion, and if anyone has bats in their belfry, it's Hillary Clinton with her Jekyll and Hyde personality that is well documented by Secret Service and others close to her. Another headline reads, Many questions and few answers about how Melania Trump immigrated to the U.S. Talk about laughable. DHS just gave 8,000 Syrian refugees amnesty, 21% of which say they will commit jihad. And the Washington Post is sweating a possible first lady who is legally married to an American citizen over her citizenship? Another one reads, Is this the beginning of the end for Donald Trump? The headline, after Trump asked to have a crime baby removed from his speech. I like it. What a baby. What a beautiful baby. Don't worry. Don't worry. Actually, I was only kidding. You can get the baby out of here. That's all right. Don't worry. I, I think she really believed me that I love having a baby crying while I'm speaking. This is what's going to take down Trump's campaign? And we are the conspiracy theorists? An all-out smear campaign based on Jeff Bezos' and Frederick J. Ryan's own political interests, half-truths, and disinformation. Yeah. They're telling the people right in their face all the um, 
Republicans, all the Democrats, all the independents, they're saying right in the people's face, you don't know what you're doing. You gotta, you gotta vote for me next week. You ain't thinking about Donald Trump. You just, you just riding on the bandwagon of success. They ain't telling us we're stupid. That's yeah. what they're telling us. And do you see that too? Freedom of the press still prevails in the United States, Mr. Bezos. If you want to actually sell papers, fill them with truth. Welcome to the State Department. I think we have some interns in the back. Welcome. Uh, good to see you in this uh, exercise and transparency and democracy. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> I Sorry, thought it was. I, didn't mean, a, I, didn't mean to break I thought it was laughter. an exercise, of, an exercise in spin and obfuscation. John Bound for Infowars.com. Right. You- in the history of U.S. politics, we have never seen more dirty tricks in an election season than we're now seeing in 2015, 2016. We witnessed Bernie Sanders win more than 10 states, including California and New Hampshire, and defeat Hillary soundly, and the superdelegates simply stepped in and said, the popular vote doesn't count. The Republican Party tried it with Donald Trump, but he won in such landslides and didn't stand down and didn't go along with it. He didn't accept the theft of our electoral system in this country, and so he became the nominee. Now the very same Republican establishment with the Democrats has been putting out for two days the lying rumor that Donald Trump is going to drop out and that Donald Trump is in all this trouble. I've talked to the inside sources, and my instincts were right about why this is happening. He raised $97 million in just a month and scared the hell out of them almost all of it grassroots donations. This is so historical. So they're putting out that he's dropping out, just like in Iowa when Ben Carson was going to beat the establishment Republican Ted Cruz. As soon as Carson's plane took off that afternoon, they went on TV and said, Carson says he's quitting. Vote for Ted Cruz now. And Ted Cruz came in second in Iowa. This is a much bigger scandal than that. And so I want to play a clip here of Trump two nights ago in Daytona, Florida, saying our campaign's never been better, we're doing great. Because he thought he didn't have to respond that hard to a pure lie because he'd already responded to it in the past, in June. So I just want to tell you the campaign is doing really well. It's never been so well united. We started on June 16th. I would say right now it's the best in terms of being united that it's been since we began. We're doing incredibly well. We're leading in the state of Florida. You saw the poll. We're leading in Ohio. You have Bernie Sanders. People are going to be voting for Trump. Something just came in. They like Trump. They like Trump. But more important than his statement two nights ago is this Politico article that we'll show you some close-ups of back in June of this year on the 18th. Would Donald Trump really drop out for $150 million? And they admit they just pulled it out of the air. They just made it up as if he would do that for money when he's lost hundreds of millions of dollars in boycotts and all the rest of it in TV deals he's lost. Deep in the article, they let Trump respond via email. This story is a total fabrication from you and Politico as usual. The New York billionaire sent an email sent by his campaign manager. I will never leave the race. Quote, I will never leave the race. I will never leave the race. Nobody has enough money to pay me to leave the race. And if they did, it would be totally illegal. Did Obama and the Clintons get you to write this garbage? Donald Trump. So they're now all over the news, two days into this, 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 this huge rollout. Number one story everywhere. Donald Trump's dropping out. Will he drop out? The Republicans are making him drop out. His sons don't like him. His campaign managers don't like him. He's crazy. It's all made up. Meanwhile, Hillary's stumbling around, acting like she's having seizures in public, reportedly has brain damage. That's even been in mainstream news. Uma Abedin admits that she doesn't you know who she is part of the time and gets totally confused. She's caught in the new WikiLeaks, actually directing the media to go after Donald Trump and other people, just like Trump predicted just a few weeks before. This is amazing. They know the new WikiLeaks is coming out. Our sources have confirmed it's the Benghazi info with her directing weapons 
and ordering generals to stand down and to ship weapons to Al-Qaeda, also known as ISIS. That's why they're panicking. That's why they want to create the illusion that he's a candidate you can't have and that he's dropped out of the race like Ben Carson. This is a hoax. This is a fraud. So you'll be hearing from Donald Trump guaranteed responding to this very, very soon. He's already responded to it multiple times, just like the whole made up KKK garbage and David Duke. But I am responding here with his own words and his own statements, and I will be standing up for everyone that wants to restore this republic, not just Donald Trump, because it's bigger than Donald Trump. It's about our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and the right of voting in this country. The fact that the entire power structure is lined up against him, the Democratic leadership, the Republican leadership, offshore banks, the Pope, the Communist Chinese president, the Mexican president, the Saudi Arabians, is the reason we've got to support Trump. We've got to have a landslide to counter their fraud and their election fraud. Trump knows there's been massive election fraud so far, but he was able to defeat it with a landslide in the primaries. Then Obama comes out and acts like it's crazy to say that there could ever be any election fraud in America when there are thousands of documented cases just in the last hundred years. So now you've seen Donald Trump's response to the lie that he has dropped out. And welcome back. I'm joined in studio now by Margaret Howell. She's going to talk to us about terror sales on the border. Margaret? Thanks for having me, Jakari. So specifically, one case that I wanted to talk to you about, uh, the, the Department of Justice, they released a press uh, release this week, and they said that a man named Eric Jamal Hendricks of Charlotte, North Carolina, he was arrested in Ohio. He was charged with providing material support for ISIS. Now, they grilled him for several hours, of course. He's still in holding. But what they found out was really disturbing. He claims that fellow militants are in Mexico and uh, his brothers, if you will, and they're part of a larger terror network. And they're using the fact that we have no border to come across and establish terror cells within the U.S. Now, they're targeting specifically um, the military members whose information was released by ISIS. Mm -hmm. We covered that uh, they were on the Telegram and 700 of those names and addresses, as well as Pamela Geller, her, her organization. If you recall, she held that contest about who could draw the best the cartoon of, depiction. of uh, Muhammad. Correct. Yeah, I remember, um, it wasn't that one, but it was a event right before that. It was a uh, Stand with the Prophet rally that was held in, I believe, the same facility in Dallas or the Dallas area. Right. Biggs and I had went up there. And at that time, you know, there wasn't any violence. There was a lot of protest and angry people, uh, passionate on both sides, but right. it was right after that, that they had the unfortunate shooting up there. Geller, I, that, that was horrible. And Dallas has been such a hotbed for this. And the, the alarming part of, of an aspect of this story, we know that uh, Texas sits on the border of Mexico, so does Arizona. So we're the state where they're entering. And the fact that Pamela Geller was a target, being that she is in Texas, that's alarming. Uh, but this young man was arrested in Ohio specifically, and uh, he was trying to gain access to weaponry and uh, specifically areas where he could plant cells within the United States. Now, this goes hand in hand with a State Department document that was released. It was made public by Judicial Watch, one of my favorite groups. You know, you get really accurate information, legally speaking. Um, and you don't get the slant from them per se, but they say that at least 10 years of Arab extremists have entered the country through Mexico with the assistance of something called smuggling networks. So we know that human trafficking and drugs is crossing the border. And very bad guys, they understand that um, terrorists also want to cross people scouting out, and they're able to pay all smugglers already to enter because they, they already have the pathways in the channel. And one of these specific areas where they're transported, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing this name, it's Akala. Uh, it's a rural crossroad that has 54 miles between, El it's an El Paso crossroad, so it's, it's next to El Paso. Right. And uh, we know that uh, 35 people of either North African or Arab, um, w w you know, in terms of where they're from, uh, they were picked up in this area and region, and the presumption is that they're scouting for spots to commit acts of terror. Oh, absolutely, because uh, the border's wide open. We've addressed that on many occasions. Mm -hmm. We've gone out there, we talked to the Border Patrol and ICE and all the people in those areas. And among the you know women and the children and all the, you know, the sad images that we see out there, you know, of course we see people who just want to come here and have a better life. Mm -hmm. You do have people who take advantage of the situation. Mm -hmm. And while many people have this presumption that everybody's coming from Mexico or further south, you got people coming Guatemala, from all over the Venezuela, world. Guatemala, Venezuela, exactly. They understand that our border is open, and uh, it's open for business, frankly. You know, I read this, and it was so disgusting to me, because not only are we are we having an issue where we have a mass influx of unvetted migrants, Hillary Clinton called on Face the Nation for 65,000 more Syrians 
gone vetted mm -hmm. to enter, but we also have a situation where we don't even have the basic paperwork for people wanting to enter and, and not knowing where they're coming from. And if this doesn't scream uh, any credence to the fact that we do need to secure our border before it's too late, you know, this, this Hendricks guy that was arrested, he point blank said that fellow militants are in Mexico waiting to come across and establish those cells. He actually told the Department of Justice this. So we've got a problem on our hands. Well, absolutely, because when we go out there, they'll tell us point blank that, you know, in the, the area in South Texas, they catch maybe, you know, 40% of the people who come across, and that's what they expect mm -hmm. is coming across. They say you could go out there various parts of the day and just see people like clockwork and follow the women and children and, you know, decent people, good people who come across. You also mm -hmm. have many people who have mm -hmm. ill intentions whether they be terrorists or gang members or anything else. Right. I really sympathize with people wanting a better life. You know, you and I do as well. And I really, my heart goes out to them. But at the same time, if we don't have a legal system, a process where everyone must go through the same process and it's equitable, we're not a nation any longer. We're just simply not a country. You know, it doesn't work that way. And unfortunately, there are a lot of hardworking people that, that deserve a better chance at, at, at a better life for themselves mm -hmm. and for their children. And I, I really agree. do sympathize. But at the same time, if we don't secure this issue, you know, given the, the heated political climate that we're in, we're going to see ramped up terrorist attacks, possibly in Texas. This man was arrested in Ohio, originally from North Carolina, all across the United States. There's just no question. Yeah, and as people have brought up the notion, if you don't have a border, you're not really a country. And they want to bring up the idea that having border security is some type of bigoted deal. When you go to Mexico, right. where a lot of these people are traveling from, you have to go through a border <laughs> checkpoint. There's nothing racial or religious or anything else right. about that. Uh, any final thoughts, Margaret? You know, just it's an honor to be with you, first of all. This is my first time uh, with Jakari. It's an honor to be in studio. But just to, just to leave people with this. Um, one of these cartels in Mexico, uh, it, was, it was known that an ISIS militant, Mahmoud Omar Kabir, was among this. Judicial Watch pointed that out. So we do have very detailed cases of people that are ISIS affiliates coming through this border. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a blanket statement. It's not generalized. It's not a fear. It's an actual it's fact. It's an actual thing. Thank you so much, Margaret Howell. And that's it for our show. We'll see you again next week.